Okay, we're back and we got the we finally got the crank in the in the block, so we're well on our way to getting this forged L83 put together. A um, couple of things, a uh, couple expenses I wasn't really I wasn't really uh, planning on, and that has been buying these main studs and an extra set of bearings, which I'll explain in a minute. Um, the mains. Okay, the mains on the factory block, which I did not know before I started this project, uh, the main bolts, the factory main bolts are torqued to yield. Now that puts you at a, in a unique situation to where it's going to be pretty hard to check the bearing clearances and, uh, you know, do your final assembly with one set of bolts when you have to, that's two different, you know, two steps, bare minimum, which has been more than that for me. But uh, anyway, if you're going to be doing something like this, you better dial in the cost of these ARP main bolts or studs. And I think they're approaching $200, maybe they're $150 a set, which is pretty expensive. So keep that in mind if you're going to do something like this. Once, once you pop this bottom, you know, this bottom part loose, you know, you're almost stuck with doing this. Um, yeah, that's that. Anyway, okay. Uh, the main bearings. Our clearances are really good. We're at, uh, where are we at? 15 ten thousandths all the way down. Uh, this one up here in the front was a little looser. I think it was about 17 ten thousandths. So we're good there. Uh, no line bore, I mean, no line hone, nothing like that. Um, I torqued all the, the main studs down, measured the main bores. They were all 2.751. Uh, this one back here in the back may have been a slightly bigger than that. Uh, maybe two and a half, ten thousandths larger, but it uh, didn't seem to matter because once I got the bearings in, um, everything measured out to about uh, 15 ten thousandths all the way down, like I said. So we're good there. Um, got everything back together with uh, the old set of bearings. Um, went to check the thrust, and the thrust was uh, didn't put it, yeah it was eight and eight eight and a half thousandths, and the spec calls for one and a half thousandths to seven point eight thousandths, seventy eight ten thousandths. So we were over the high end of the spec by about almost a thousandth so i'm like oh damn so here we go again i'm like do i run it you know slightly out of spec or do i see if i can do something about it so i went online to look to see how much a, a thrust bearing was because i figured you know over a hundred thousand miles maybe this one had worn a thousandth or more and that put us back in spec this one's always been broken doesn't seem to matter um, once it's on there it's captured in there but uh yeah, so I go online, look to see how much this thrust bearing cost. Well, just this bearing, just the upper portion of it, is uh, was about, I don't know, $37 or $40 just for this one bearing. So I'm like, oh, great. Do I do I go spend the 40 bucks for, you know, what's equal to about a thousandth of an inch or ten thousandth of an inch? What was it? A, th oh, a thousandth of an inch. Or just run it the way it is. And I said, well, let me keep looking. So then I went online. And I saw that you could buy the whole set of bearings. Here's the part number right here. And that's for the whole set. And you can get the whole set for less than 50 bucks out the door at the Chevy dealership. So the long and short of that is if you need one of these bearings, just go ahead and buy the whole set because it's just as cheap or just a little bit more. You might as well have them all. So I said, okay, even though these bearings, there's nothing wrong with them. The clearances were fine. I said, okay, well, let's just go ahead and do the whole shooting match. So pop the whole thing loose, put the new bearings in, you know, crushed them down without the crank, measured them. They were all exactly the same as these over here. So they were the same. So I said, oh, great. So then I popped the crank back in, tightened them back down, went to check the thrust again, and ended up at seven thousandths, which was still at the high end of the range here. So I think I'm gonna run it as is. I was looking online most people run, you know, eight thousandths or more on their thrust from what I could see. And apparently they were having a lot of issues with LS engines and, uh, uh, you know, throwing or tearing the thrust bearing out, you know, if it was too tight, obviously. Um, 
So I think being at the top of the range will be okay. I can't imagine running a thrust at one and a half thousandths. That would just be insane. I think you'd be asking for trouble, you know, with that. So we're good. Um, I might feel a little bit better to be a little looser on the mains, but plenty of people making a hell of a lot of horsepower with the factory specs. And, you know, like I said, that, you know, the, this is a spec on that. We're talking eight ten thousandths to two and a half thousandths. And I can't imagine running a bearing it. You know, that, that just seems crazy to me. I mean, you just have to be all kinds of right on everything to, to even contemplate something like that. So I don't know, we're double that, almost double that. So we should be good. Um, Got to put the, the pistons and rods together and uh, get those in here and get the rings off off it and all that stuff. So, but everything looks good. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I do want to show you all one other thing. I've gotten rid of the PCB system on my on the truck. I think I'm going to try to run open breathers from here on out. And it's not for uh, uh, crankcase pressures or anything like that. It's more... Uh, I'll show you what I've done here. Basically got to put my uh, the valve cover breathers back on. And I've capped off the, the vacuum port here and the one down here in the valley cover capped off and really the only reason I did it was well I did originally do it just for crankcase pressure I didn't really want it back feeding into here and kind of a byproduct of that I noticed was uh, my original intent was to run this style you know if I was really going to get on and if I was going to go do dyno sessions or whatever but uh, after putting that on and watching my my idle trims I think there's a lot of oil vapor you know making its way back in here and it's affecting the mixture you know what the oxygen sensors see and i can guarantee you if you go out to your truck right now and you cap off your pcv system or check your idle trims before you do it and then cap it off and then look at your idle trims there's going to be a difference i don't remember if it was too rich or too lean i don't remember what it showed i would assume it'd be too rich but maybe not i don't remember but there was definitely a difference so just keep in mind that that pcv system is probably affecting your idle mixture at least it's probably affecting it the uh, you know the whole wave it's probably not as noticeable since there's no vacuum but at vacuum idle it's it's definitely throwing it a little bit so you might want to check into that clean it up by capping that off and i know all about you know i may have to change my oil more often all that i don't need <laughs> fifteen thousand comments telling me i need a catch can that's another thing you can see i've been in boost there's no oil there's a good baffle system inside these valve covers i wouldn't worry too much about it uh, but what I was saying is I don't need somebody to, oh, you got to have a catch can on this shit. I know, I know all about it. I know, I know the risk. Let's put it that way. Which there's none. But anyway, that's it, guys. Uh, that's, uh, everything's going good. Uh, oh, one thing I wanted to mention was I did take off. You can see I put the silicone back in here. I, these two are now bonded together, this, this uh, 95 millimeter adapter and the Whipple thing. And I went, went ahead and polished you know, opened it up, and uh, so it's 95 millimeter from here all the way to at least here, so there's no steps or anything. But upon doing that, and even before that, you are gonna need a retune, I think, um, throughout the RPM range. Um, certainly at idle, I know in that original video, I said, oh, no, it didn't affect the fuel trim at all. It, it did. Um, I guess it took a while for them to learn them in, but yeah, that was, I can't remember if it was richer, richer or, or leaner at this point, but you're going to need to, you're probably going to need a retune. I hate to, I hate to say that, but it's, that's it. I mean, so if you're going to do all this stuff, make sure, you know, you just do everything you can before you go get a tune. That way you're not making any unnecessary, the cost of unnecessary retunes. But that's it guys. Let me get this rest of the short block put together and I don't know if the weather stays cooler, maybe I'll be able to pop it in. I kind of was telling myself if it gets too hot, I don't want to mess with this stuff, but we could probably knock it out in a day, day, two days for sure, swapping it out. So that's it, boys. We'll see y'all later.